What secrets did Canada literally bury in the ground? When exactly did a certain former president test positive for a certain disease? Keep watching for more secrets that couldn't stay hidden forever. Right after rioters broke into the Capitol building in Washington, D.C. on January 6th to overturn an election that hardline Republicans claim was rigged, the blame was laid upon a spiteful, outgoing president and a core of right-wing zealots. But subsequent investigations revealed that several higher-ups, from members of Congress to White House insiders, may have in fact helped plan the attack. The House Select Committee investigating the incident interviewed many accused rioters who claimed that they talked to some prominent Republicans and Trump allies before the incident. The riot was originally designed to discourage Vice President Mike Pence from certifying the results of the election, which was won by Joe Biden. But the committee eventually focused on text messages from former Chief of Staff Mark Meadows. This revealed ways that Trump could get the Department of Justice to overturn the election results, which also included correspondence with a member of Congress about how Pence could disavow Biden's victory. Even Fox News apparently knew about how violent the riots could get, with Sean Hannity texting Meadows before the insurrection that he was, quote, very worried about the next 48 hours. And according to Robert Costa and Bob Woodward, authors of the book Peril, persons of interest may indeed go right to the top. As Costa put it during a January 2022 appearance on The View, And they're all trying to figure out, can they push Republicans in Congress to really cause chaos on January 6th? On October 2, 2020, then-President Donald Trump announced that he tested positive for COVID-19. This led to a three-day stay at the Walter Reed National Military Medical Center, where he was hooked to a respirator and administered a cocktail of antibodies. But White House insiders never let on that he was already infected during his first presidential debate against Joe Biden. More than a year later, The Guardian revealed that secret to the public, ahead of its publication in The Chief's Chief, a memoir written by Mark Meadows. Trump's chief of staff at the time. Meadows wrote that Trump tested positive after a Rose Garden ceremony in honor of Supreme Court nominee Amy Coney Barrett held three days before the September 29th debate. Immediately before the debate, Trump didn't look well. As Meadows wrote, I could tell that he was moving more slowly than usual. He walked like he was carrying a little extra weight on his back. Notably, neither Trump nor the White House submitted mandatory negative test results to officials 72 hours before the debate. If Trump had managed to pass on the virus to his opponent, it's staggering to consider what the political picture would have been like in a worst-case scenario involving the two candidates. While the United States continued to grapple with social and political divisions within its own borders, Canada didn't exactly get to enjoy its reputation as a supposedly more inclusive country. That's because in the summer of 2021, unmarked grave sites containing the bodies of nearly 1,000 Aboriginal children were discovered in Western Canada. The remains were found in two locations, both near schools that were part of a century-old master plan designed by the federal government and the Catholic Church to indoctrinate Aboriginal children into a predominantly white society and to eradicate Native culture altogether. As Bob Chamberlain, former vice president of the Union of British Columbia Indian Chiefs, reacted to the news during a CBC interview. It hurts so much to keep hearing uh, about how these are being uncovered. All the discoveries involved aboriginals and used radar technology to search for missing school children. They were casualties of a residential school system that at one point accommodated more than 130 institutions that frequently abused its young pupils into adopting European culture. That last such school shut down in 1996, but not before at least 4,100 children died, with thousands more scarred by the system. The grisly finds inflicted additional pain into Aboriginal communities already trying to heal via initiatives set forth by the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, which was launched in 2007 to deal with these incidents and other atrocities aimed at the Native population. As Canada's governor, General Mary May Simon, herself an Aboriginal citizen, announced in a statement, These are uncomfortable truths and often hard to accept. But the truth also unites us as a nation, brings us together to dispel anger and despair, and embrace justice, harmony, and trust instead. 
In January 2021, a little-known stock for the fading video game retailer GameStop nearly pulled off an endgame on Wall Street by jumping in value from $19 to $325 in the span of two weeks. It was so earth-shattering that it nearly put a few established investment firms out of business. Was this the work of an insidious insider? Not at all. It turns out a group of hobbyist players on Reddit invested heavily in the company on a whim and drove the price up by 1,600%. Established traders initially laughed at the move. That is, until hedge funds started losing cash. They make their money through financial leverage and selling short, which refers to bailing on a stock before a predicted drop in value. One hedge fund, Melvin Capital, lost more than half its assets and even had to be bailed out. GameStop's stock eventually dropped, but what is now being referred to as the Reddit revolt is symptomatic of how vulnerable Wall Street is to outside influence. It also addressed the issue of how other stocks on the market might not be properly valued. As Harrison Hong, a financial economics professor at Columbia, told The Washington Post, if you're just wrong as a society in terms of where you place your bets about businesses, ultimately, that's pretty bad. For much of her life, Britney Spears has ruled the pop charts, but for 13 years, she couldn't even access the bank account containing the spoils of her lucrative career. That's because she was under a court-ordered legal arrangement that placed her father, Jamie Spears, in charge of all her personal and financial affairs. But that changed in 2021 when she finally managed to break the shackles of that conservatorship. Spears' erratic behavior, from shaving her head to hitting a photographer's car in 2007, seemed to indicate mental health struggles on her part that supposedly warranted the conservatorship to protect her well-being. But in June 2021, it took a scathing probate court testimony in Los Angeles from Spears to reveal that her conservatorship was far more abusive than anyone had imagined. Everything involving her life was out of her control, including social media posts, finances, touring itinerary, and medication. Add to that flattery from her therapists and even threats from lawyers if she dared make her conservatorship public. As she insisted during a court hearing, I just want my life back, and it's been 13 years, and it's enough. Spears' fans are overjoyed for her newfound freedom. But whether her example will set a precedent for others caught in similarly abusive situations remains to be seen. What's your reaction? Um, we're super happy for Britney. This is why we're out here, exactly. For years, Facebook has promised that its social media platform would be safer for users prone to receiving hate messages, fake news, and other threats. CEO Mark Zuckerberg even appeared before Congress to say, I'm committed to getting this right. But in 2021, a whistleblower in the form of Facebook product manager Francis Haugen demonstrated that that commitment was in fact an empty gesture. To prove it, she leaked thousands of documents citing her employer for continuing to facilitate hate speech and causing numerous other violations, including some that may have led to the January 6th Capitol insurrection. Multiple media outlets received the documents, which revealed improprieties, like an unwillingness to follow research-based recommendations to decrease misinformation, failure to filter offensive posts, and an inability to police sites outside the U.S. Haugen became concerned about Facebook's integrity before the 2020 election, when her superiors killed initiatives to eliminate misinformation surrounding the event. As she told Time magazine, I was learning all these horrific things about Facebook, and it was really tearing me up inside. When Haugen found out later that year that her civic integrity group at Facebook's San Francisco headquarters was being dismantled, she went public. She testified before the Senate in October 2021, outlining Facebook's violations and suggestions suggesting recommendations like a task force to investigate social media algorithms. Today, she lives in Puerto Rico, using encryption technology to keep her specific whereabouts a secret. Bill Gates has long been admired for his genius behind his lucrative Microsoft conglomerate, as well as starting a worldwide foundation to support international causes with his wife Melinda. But in 2021, the revered philanthropist also became notorious as a philanderer. In May, the couple announced their plans to divorce after 27 years of marriage, following the news that Bill had carried on an affair with a Microsoft employee. As reported by Vanity Fair, this may very well have continued had Melinda not hired a private investigator to gather evidence on her husband's activities that eventually led to one of the darkest periods of his life. As he revealed on his Gate Notes blog, Melinda and I continue to run our foundation together and have found a good new working rhythm. 
but I can't deny that it's been a year of great personal sadness for me. In addition to the affair, Gates also had some explaining to do regarding his relationship with convicted sex offender Jeffrey Epstein, who committed suicide in a jail cell while awaiting trial that summer. As Gates told CNN's Anderson Cooper, I had several dinners with him, hoping that what he said about getting billions of philanthropy for global health through contacts that he had might emerge. You know, when it looked like that wasn't a real thing, that relationship ended. But it was a huge mistake. Uh, to spend time with him. The Golden Globes' recent absence from NBC Airwaves spoke volumes about the precarious state of the award show in the wake of scandal plaguing its organizers, the Hollywood Foreign Press Association. While various improprieties have dodged the FHPA for years without any severe repercussions, accusations of racism were harder to ignore. Credit a Los Angeles Times expose for stoking this particular fire, as it was revealed that a membership board of fewer than 100 had zero black representation as well as a culture of corruption, according to one source. Reaction was fierce, as the black community called out the FHPA for snubbing the critically acclaimed series, I May Destroy You, while instead nominating Emily in Paris. Anger intensified after Deadline broke a story about a former HFPA president's email calling Black Lives Matter a racist hate movement. Additional backlash ensued, including a Time's Up campaign, a boycott staged by the likes of Netflix and Time Warner, additional condemnation from celebrities like Tom Cruise, and NBC axing the broadcast of the 2022 ceremony, which wound up being held as a modest private event. As HFPA Vice President Helene Huna announced, while we celebrate the work of artists from around the globe, we recognize we have our own work to do. While New York City endured the COVID pandemic and came to terms with the political maelstrom of former President Donald Trump, residents could at least rely on positive reassurances from Governor Andrew Cuomo and his brother, CNN journalist Chris Cuomo. But thanks to leaks and public complaints, Big Apple residents soon discovered some uncomfortable truths about the siblings. Andrew was hit with several sexual harassment allegations, which he initially denied. But then came a scathing report issued in August 2021 by New York Attorney General Letitia James. It outlined detailed accounts of inappropriate touching and sexist comments from 11 women, several of them public employees. By September, the governor resigned in disgrace. Meanwhile, Chris Cuomo, who frequently had his brother as a guest on his show, stayed silent about the situation. But CNN later fired him after finding out that he used his credentials to find information to help his brother. As he announced on Twitter, "'This is not how I want my time at CNN to end.'" Chris has since also been the subject of misconduct allegations himself, including one by TV executive Shelley Ross, who claimed in a New York Times essay that she was groped by him at a party in 2005. If you or anyone you know has been a victim of sexual assault, help is available. Visit the Rape, Abuse, and Incest National Network website or contact Rain's National Helpline at 1-800-656-HOPE-4673.